No, move your feet back and forth. <laughs> now in unison, to the left. <laughs> to the right. Rapidly, left, right, left, right. <laughs> now wait, now be surprised. <laughs> Show me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Excited. <laughs> Confused. <laughs> I just love that. Those girls make me laugh. Those are three of our nieces, Jessica, Savannah, and Jacqueline, who live in Arizona, but came up over New Year's to visit us. And as you can see, we just had a great time with them. Um, after we'd been around the fire for a while, we came into my apothecary and they had some questions and wanted to look around, but we decided before they left that we would make something together that they could take home with them. And really one of the simplest things, what came to my mind, immediately was to make one of these little personal inhalers with essential oils. And um, I'll show you in depth what you do with these, but basically it has a little cover. Um, it has a wick, which I don't have the wick out right now. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but you drop your essential oils in there and then you can smell it. Now, I don't recommend you do this driving down the road. You are gonna get some looks, but um, in the privacy of your home or your cubicle or wherever, that's when you pull this out. So for the girls, we were, you know, really going crazy with the oils. And I think we probably used about 14 different oils in the blend that we all ended up with. But I came up with a blend that's much simpler for you. Um, it only has three essential oils in it, but all of them are very powerful. But first of all, what is aromatherapy? Aromatherapy is the use of essential oils for therapeutic benefit. And essential oils are the extraction of plant material, whether you're using the bark, the leaves, the flowers, or the seeds, or in the case of citrus, you're using the, um, the peel of the, the plant or the, you know, the fruit to um, get to the essence of that plant. Let's get sciency for a second, shall we? Every time we smell an essential oil or virtually any scent, what happens is the molecules from that essence travel to the olfactory nerves in our noses, which then transports those molecules to the limbic system of our brain, the amygdala. This portion of our brain is what helps us to discern danger. It connects us to memory. It helps us understand body language. And it is the center that controls our emotions. I think that's why essential oils are so powerful. I also think it's why every time I smell a box of brand new crayons, I am instantly transported back to kindergarten. Now, when you're doing citrus, you use a cold press method, but for virtually everything else, the way that you get at that oil is through steam distillation. And let me tell you, it takes many, many, many pounds of material to get just one little bottle of oil, which is why they can be a little bit expensive. But at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you about the company that I use that is wonderful, but it's not as expensive as the two multi-level marketing companies that you may have heard about, but we'll get to that. So when you um, are looking at making a blend like this, you wanna know the purpose for the blend. And what I thought would be good would be for us to talk about one that is for anxiety or stress. Uh, one that you know, you're getting ready to take a test or you're in traffic and it's horrible, or you just have had a hard day and you know you just want something that's gonna calm you down a little bit. These three oils have proven benefits that will be helpful for that. The first of these is lavender. And there's really no dispute about lavender. Pretty much everyone knows that lavender is a calming oil and that it helps to reduce your stress and that it's really great for helping you to sleep or to get to sleep. So people will sometimes spray lavender scent over their pillow. I actually have some lavender that I cut from my own plants hanging above our bed. That's how much I believe in lavender. And it's just a wonderful all around safe um, essential oil. And I say safe because some are a little bit more volatile. Some can cause a reaction to the skin. So before you go putting straight oil on your hands or whatever, 
at any time you want to look it up and you want to be really slow to do that because you might have a reaction to that, which is why most recipes using essential oils also call for a carrier oil. But we're not going to get into that so much because I want to just show you about this inhaler for this video. Uh, the second one is lemon. Now lemon is a known mood lifter, which is what we're after if we're trying to combat any kind of depression or the blues. Um, and there's an interesting study that showed that the scent of lemon when given to patients with dementia was shown to reduce their agitation. So that's a good reason to have this in our anti-stress blend. The third one is clary sage. And you may not have heard about clary sage, but it is powerful. And let me tell you, there was a study done in the Journal of Phytotherapeutic Research, I believe it was, and I will link the studies to these three oils, at least two of them. Lavender is kind of known by everybody, so I'm, I'm going to do lemon and clary sage, but I will link to those so you can read about that. But in this study, um, clary sage was given to a group of women in their 50s who were menopausal, and the results showed that the scent of clary sage caused a 36% decrease in their cortisol level. And cortisol and stress go hand in hand. So anything that will reduce it by 36% is something that we wanna take advantage of. So these little personal inhalers are just a wonderful little gift to be able to give as a hostess gift or um, a birthday present or just a, a little gift for a friend that's going through a trying time. And they go together so quickly that you don't even need to make them up ahead of time. Just have your materials ready and you can put them together at a moment's notice. So I'll show you about that and then do stick around at the end because I want to tell you another thing that has helped me with the whole um, idea of stress or, you know, when the world looks extremely dark. These are some things that I think about and remind myself of and I'll tell you that at the end. So that's a pretty powerful um So that's a pretty powerful. So I will link below to where you can pick these up. They come in all sorts of colors, as you can see. I think I just saw some in primary colors too, which would be nice. And I have bought them in um, where this part is metal, but those are thicker and I just don't like them as well. I really love these little thin plastic ones. So anyway, they come in three parts plus a wick and you just put the wick in there we're gonna drop the oils right inside of that and then when you're done you screw it in there and you put this cap on this part can be a little bit hard sometimes Dave has to help me get that in there <laughs> and I will tell you once you get it in there good luck getting it back out but what I tend to do is I just open it up and then I drop oils right in here if I need to refresh them so let's just make a batch what we're gonna do is drop the wick in there and then I have my three oils. I've got lavender, lemon, and clary sage. Okay, so the wick is inside and I've got my oils. And for this recipe, what I'm going to show you, and you can of course deviate all you want, but what I've been doing is four drops. Oh, let me see if I can do this with the camera right there. Four drops of lavender. And I usually just give that a second to absorb. Four drops of lemon. So that's eight. And then I double the clary sage since it has those cortisol reducing properties. I want more of this. Plus I like the way it smells in this combination. So one, two, Okay, so you can see in there, and then I'm just going to set it in the cap, screw it down, put this on. This is where it can be a little tough, but I think I can get it without Dave's help. <laughs> and then I just usually shake it up a little bit and let it sit. But I'll tell you what, that smells so good, and I find myself going back to it again and again. I think you should try this. I think you would love it. So when you buy those little personal inhalers, they also include little labels that you can write on. And I'm not going to do it right now, but you can take those off and put them on your inhaler, which is nice. I wanted to show you a few other things that you can do with this blend. 
I have this little teeny tiny sample bottle. Isn't that cute? I will link to that as well, of course. Um, I put the same exact amount in there that I did for the personal inhaler. Both of these have a total of 16 drops of essential oil, four lemon, four lavender, and eight clary sage. For this one here, what I would do, I just made it up to show you the little bottle, but I would fill the rest of this container with um, either jojoba oil or almond oil, not for me because I'm allergic to almonds, but or um, fractionated coconut oil so that I had a carrier. And then you can take this and just dab it on your wrist, you know, if you want, or you can put it behind your ear or um, rub it on the top of your hand, which I tend to do. But um, it's a good idea to add essential, or excuse me, add carrier oils when you're going to be actually putting any oils on your skin, except for lavender. It's very gentle, and I don't know anybody that has trouble with that. But the other thing that comes in, you can get those in larger bottles like this, or even bigger bottles like that. And these are roller balls. Um, I just think these are so cute. What happens is you get, when you get this kit, you get the bottle, and then you get the little roller ball part, and then a cap. So you just pop that in there. And in order to get it out, you can buy these little, sometimes they come with the, the balls. I've, I have so many of these sitting around because I reorder these roller balls all the time. But you just take these and it helps you to pop the top off. Yep. It's always easy when you're not trying to film it, of course. So those are some other options. And again, if I was doing either of those roller balls or this little sample, make sure that you add a good amount of carrier oil to that. There are actual formulas that you can use when you're doing that, but I, looking at this, I've got my eight drops, I would fill the rest of that bottle with it. For these, I would probably put a total of about 32, let's see, what do I have in there, 16? So about, I would probably double the amount of the oil to 32 and then fill it with carrier oil. And then for this one, I might do the same, double that again, so 64 drops and the rest with carrier oil, but that's just me. Um, you wanna be safe, you don't wanna put straight oils on your body. So I said that I would share with you some of the other things that have helped me during some dark periods of my life, or even just those times when you just get in a funk, you know? One thing is I try to remember the words of my grandmother who used to say to me, Shani, whatever it is that has you so down, I promise you in six months, you're not even gonna remember what it was. And those words have proven to be true over and over. But then I also try to remember the words of the Apostle Paul, who when he wrote to the church in Corinth, the second letter in chapter four, he said, for these light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that will far outweigh them. And I really believe that down to my core. You know, we're not here to hunker in a corner and try to keep all the bad things away. I mean, I think sometimes we think the goal of life is to get through it without any scars, and that's just not true. Scars tell the story of a life, and it shows that you've been a daredevil and that you've been out there living. <laughs> so sometimes the hard things that we go through and some of those scars that are emotional that no one else sees, they're really just a landmark uh, through your life to show that you've lived. Um, I don't know who said it, but I love that saying that a ship in harbor is safe, but that's not what ships, ships were made for. And we were not made to just try to get unscathed through this life. I also try to remind myself of how short life is. And I'll tell you about a time, there have been several, when I did not know how to answer, but God came through for me and gave me a picture or gave me the words right as I was speaking. And there was this one time when my son, Zach, was about four, and he just asked me out of the clear blue, Mom, what is eternity? And of course, inside I was like, oh my word, how am I supposed to answer that? How am I supposed to tell him something I don't even know? But God came through because as I began to try to speak, he gave me this picture and I said, Zach, what if we were to take one of your tears and put it in a tiny little bottle and put a tiny little cork on top? And then we got into a boat and we rowed out to the very deepest part of the ocean and took that cork off and poured your tear over the side of the boat. I said, would we ever be able to find it again? And he said, no. And I said, would you even want to? And he said, no. And then I said, life is a teardrop and eternity is the ocean. 
And when we're there, we're not gonna think about here. We're not gonna even remember all the hard things that we've gone through. So bear that in mind, it's helped me because it can feel at times like life just goes on and on and on. And you just think, how am I gonna to get to the end of my days? It's so hard. I remember when I lost my mom when I was 26, one of the things that I thought immediately was, how am I supposed to live another 50 years without her? Well, it's been 36 years now, and I'm not saying it's been easy, but I got through it. I get through every day, and I know I'm going to be reunited with her. So when these hard things come up, use your personal inhaler, pray, ask God to walk with you through whatever trouble you're in, and remember that life is a teardrop, eternity is the ocean, and we're not going to remember these hard things when we're there in his presence. So God bless you, and thanks for listening, and I'll see you again. All right, I told you that I would share with you the name of the company that I've been using. I've used all the oils from the two big companies, Young Living and doTERRA, and they're awesome. But they're also multi-level marketing companies, which means that between the product and you, there are five or six middlemen that all are benefiting from your purchase. And if the oils that I was using was of a lesser quality, I would go back to one of the two big ones, but it's not. I found Eden's Garden after trying, I don't know, seven or eight different oil lines from different companies, and I really love Eden's Garden. So I'm going to link to them below, and you can go take a look. What you'll notice is that they're quite a bit less expensive than their counterparts. One of the claims that those two big companies make is that theirs is the purest and that they grow their own plants. Well, they do, at least one of them does own some farms, but like Eden's Garden, they source globally. So there's not a difference there, really. Um, I've had side-by-side -side comparisons between two of those, at least, where I've had peppermint or lemon from both, and you can't tell a difference. So, you know, it's completely up to you. I don't argue about these things. This is just how I've settled. And so, um, you know, look into it for yourself. I will include an article from another woman that did quite a bit more research than I did. I just know from experience that I love the quality of the Eden's Garden oils. And I love too that they're so much less expensive. But this woman did more research. So I'll link to her article and you can read for yourself.